Uh, today we are announcing an agreement between the Union Pacific Railroad and Jackson County for the purchase of several rail corridors throughout Jackson County. And these are significant rail corridors and a significant step uh, in terms of looking at regional rail as well as trails within Jackson County. Uh, now until today, uh, what we'll say is that regional rail has always been a concept that has been of great interest to people in this community. But until today, these were just lines on a map, these pencil lines on a map, but not reality. Concepts, but not reality. Uh, today, with the agreement, this historic agreement with the Union Pacific Railroad, today, commuter rail becomes a possibility uh, for the citizens of Jackson County. Uh, the Union Pacific in this process has been a real partner, and a true partner for all of us in Jackson County. It's one of the largest corporations in the world, it's one of the largest railroads uh, in the world as well. Uh, it's really through their generosity and their partnership that we're able to talk about the potential acquisition of these corridors uh, in, in the not too distant future. Key points to make, first off, this agreement entails no financial risk for the taxpayers of this community or any other community. This is an option to purchase at no charge to the citizens of Jackson County. As a lawyer that's negotiated deals throughout my career, I have an option agreement to purchase something at no cost to a, to a taxpayer or no cost to an entity is significant. I think it also shows the goodwill on the part of the Union Pacific Railroad to offer this to the citizens of Jackson County and this community at no cost. The cost for the purchase of these, these three corridors, which we'll talk about here in just a second, uh, is offered to us at $59.9 million. That figure is also significant. The original plug figure from Jim Terry, who's with us here today with Trans Systems, was for $90 million for the purchase of just the Rock Island Corridor, not the Pixley Spur and the Independence Spur. So more tracks at roughly a third the price. The first offer that we thought that we received from the Union Pacific Railroad, though, was for an offer of over $120 million just for the purchase of, of the Rock Island route, which didn't include access to the Casey Terminal track, which we'll talk about here in just a second. So we're getting a better deal at a third or half of the price, which we think is significant and once again shows the great generosity and the partnership of the Union Pacific Railroad and how they've worked with us as real partners in this project. Uh, what we're going to do is work as a coalition. We've got a number of elected officials. We've got the city manager, Steve Arbo, Arbo of the city of Lee Summit, Dave Bauer, uh, mayor of the city of Raytown. We have Don Rymel. Uh, to my right, Don Ryan, the mayor of the great city of Independence, one of the great cities in the world, uh, the city of Independence, the one we're in here today, with us here to talk a bit about this project. Uh, but we're going to work with the coalition partners to attempt to look at the finances and how we would put this together. But just as importantly, as this process has wound through over the last 24 months, as we've worked with the Union Pacific Railroad in partnership, uh, we've continued to keep our congressional delegation updated about this process. Uh, we're told by Congressman Cleaver's office specifically, as well as others, that is realistic, uh, it's not unrealistic, I should say, to think that through the federal government, through a grant, through something like a Tiger Grant, that we could receive the full purchase price uh, for this right away. Uh, also of significance, and we think once again a sign of the goodwill and generosity of the Union Pacific Railroad, is that the Union Pacific has also included provisions in this agreement for owner financing. So if a portion of the, of the purchase price could be obtained in the future, uh, that we could pay that off over, over a period of time, which could include, in fact, years. Uh, once again, at no cost to the taxpayers. So once again, I think showing the generosity of the Union Pacific Railroad. Uh, also of significance, we think, is that Jack Coraleski, the CEO of Union Pacific, is the one that signed this MOU on behalf of the Union Pacific. I certainly did on behalf of Jackson County. But we think, once again, that shows the interest of the Union Pacific Railroad. That it goes no higher on the food chain than Jack Coraleski, the CEO, actually signed this agreement. It wasn't signed by the Director of Rail Operations or PR staff. It was signed directly by him, uh, which we think is also significant. Uh, now, rail can certainly be used along these corridors, but what was always contemplated was that it would be used for trails as well. Uh, you can look at these corridors and see how the Rock Island Corridor, which I think we've got the map in the back, as you look at the Rock Island Corridor, it hooks up ultimately down here, as I hit Mike Hendricks in the head with the pointer, I'm sorry Mike, as we look at Greenwood, how it ties in with Greenwood, and ultimately the Katy Trail, uh, talking with Mr. Arbo, there are plans with the City of Lee Summit to move the Katy Trail north along 150 and a few other routes, which would look directly uh, with the Rock Island would connect with the Katy Trail. Uh, that, in turn, hooks in with the Little Blue Trace Trail, potentially, for Jackson County, as well as a number of hiking and biking trails through Swope Parkway, the City of Kansas City, Blue Springs, Independence, Lee Summit, certainly Raytown. And so you can see in the not-too-distant future, just with this one potential acquisition, uh, you can see an integrated network of trails that certainly <coughs> connects every community in Jackson County with, frankly, the state of Missouri and St. Louis. So theoretically, you could leave your house at 63rd and Brookside, hook up on, on, on the trail there, make your way all the way to the city of St. Louis, and never leave a hiking or biking trail. 
that in and of itself has significance, regardless of whether this is used in the future in the future for rail or rail rail projects. Uh, once again, I want to make sure we emphasize the importance of this project and how uh, this would not be possible without the Union Pacific Railroad working with us. Now, if you look at these corridors, and it's hard for me to talk in the microphone and turn and do this, but I'm going to give it a shot. But if you look at the corridors, this is the Rock Island Corridor. This is the Pixley Spur, uh, which is roughly 3.5 miles, which heretofore uh, had not been offered by the Union Pacific Railroad at any price. Uh, but beyond that, we look here at the Independent Spur Line, which is 1.9 miles. Now, the 1.9 miles, uh, we believe, is owned largely, if not wholly, by Jackson County, uh, Jackson County government. However, this 1.9 miles uh, was a former Union Pacific route. What they have done at no cost is ceded their rights orally, ceded their rights to that 1.9 miles. Whatever ownership interest they may have been found to have in the future uh, will be ceded ultimately to Jackson County. Now, one other item that we wish to point out, we started negotiating uh, roughly two years ago, working with uh, the Union Pacific in terms of trying to piece together uh, access to these rights away. Uh, there were two truisms that we were told about commuter rail in, in Jackson County. And one was, you'll never get to Union Station because you'll never get into the trench. Uh, that will never occur. We stand here today, that still remains true. Uh, the second is, never discuss access or commuter rail access to the Sedalia Sub, which is this route right here. Uh, another truism, as night follows day, as the sun rises and sets in the west, you'll never run a commuter train on the Sedalia Sub. Uh, today we're also announcing uh, that once again, through the generosity of the Union Pacific Railroad, that for the first time in county history, they're willing to explore running commuter trains along the Sedalia Sub. Uh, we can look at that for engineering work, look at that for access, but that makes that a possibility as well. Uh, you don't have to be a rail engineer uh, like Jim Terry to see the significance. The Pixley Spur immediately ties into the Sedalia Sub and ultimately flows down to Third Grand, as well as the KC Terminal route that flows off that. So almost overnight with the purchase of these right of ways, should that occur in the future, should we decide that that's a priority, uh, you're looking at commuter rail becoming a possibility in fairly short order, uh, working with our, our partner in this project, the Union Pacific Railroad. Uh, we think those are significant de developments, those are important developments, uh, and for the first time in county history, we can say that commuter rail is a possibility, not just an idea on a map. And with that, we've got a number of our other partners that are with us. I'm gonna first, I think, start to my right, move to the left, I rarely do that line, but I'll start with, right <laughs> and I'll start with uh, my mayor first, uh, Mayor Rymel. Uh, on behalf of, uh, of, of all the partners, now we put this announcement together fairly quickly when we were given authority to move forward publicly with this by the Union Pacific and our other partners. Uh, we certainly want to make sure that we mention Blue Springs and Carson Ross has been a huge partner in this process as well, as well as the City of Grandview through several iterations. But once again, as always, whether it's the City of Independence, Raytown, Lee Summit, as well as Blue Springs and Grandview, we've all worked together very quietly, working together to make this happen. I also want to make sure that I thank all the members of the legislature. I mean, this has been, I think, for all of us a long odyssey. I know we've kept you updated. You've been involved in this process all the way through. I want to thank each and every one of you for your support in this process. And because of your support, uh, your agreement, and your working with us and all of us working together as a team, as a partner with all of Jackson County, uh, we've got a great announcement here today. And with that, I'm going to turn this over to Don Ryan. Fine. Is this... I think I'm going to just make this one work. This is an opportunity that doesn't come along with once in a lifetime. We've got to take advantage of it. We need to move on this and make sure that uh, all we're offered that we take advantage of and make the commuter rail possibility and the trails a reality. This is something that people in, in Jackson County can get their arms around and, and work with. We can do wondrous things for the economic development of Jackson County. Once you have commuter, uh, commuter rail, once you have that transportation where you can move people quickly and efficiently, you can bring in businesses that we've never even thought about. And I think that's a very important item that we've got to keep in mind. Take advantage of what we have been offered and make make the trails a reality and the commuter rail, uh, it will come. So we need to do it. And before, uh, before, I turn, before I turn this over to Mayor Bauer, I want to make sure that I mention John McGurk, the Chief of Staff of the Mayor of the City of Kansas City, is with us here today. Uh, once again, the City of Kansas City has been great partners in this process, although these rail routes largely run through eastern Jackson County. 
everything that this involves works in partnership with the city of Kansas City. These are two wholly complementary projects as these governments and all the governments represented here today continue to work together to look at how we make this a reality for all the citizens. And with that, I'll turn this over to, to the man who's going to be the forward on our local mayor's basketball team, Mayor Bob. <laughs> he won't play very long, but he's happy to be there. <laughs> you know, it is big. It's a big day for the region. It's a big day for the city of Raytown, certainly. As my friend Don Rammel pointed out, it, it's big for economic development, what this does for all of us. But, but when you also talk about the feel good that it does for all of our citizens, in fact, we, we have this potential for a trail, you know, bike path, pedestrian path, the linkage that it provides all of us is phenomenal. And you cannot put a value on feel good for our citizens. And that's that's probably the biggest thing. When we talk about a coalition, you've all you're also experiencing a coalition of these governments. We have worked together, many people have worked together from our individual cities for a good number of years to put this together. I, I thank you and Mike, I thank you for all your hard work in bringing this to fruition. It's a big day. Uh, Mayor Randy Rhodes uh, sends his uh, very best to each of you and his apologies for being here. He had a commitment that would not allow him to, to be here. So as a city manager, I'm speaking on, on his behalf. And uh, the city of Lee Summit initially began exploring the purchase of the Rock Island Railroad in the early 2000s. We had a lot, as you know, we've been a growth community. We had a lot of roads that needed to be expanded. And um, every time we went to Rock Island Railroad to ask for permission to uh, to do a road crossing, we were received negatively, um, and it was uh, it was becoming frankly it was becoming a frustration. So we asked the Rock Island Railroad, especially for our Chipman Road project, which if you all uh, know about the single tunnel uh, that now has a light in it, it's not as exciting as it used to be to go through it uh, as a traffic signal that makes the other side stop. But um, we we asked them, what could we do in order to change this uh, environment? And that was the very first time they started uh, being open to purchase. And that's when we formed a uh, coalition of five communities, uh, including uh, Jackson County, and uh, frankly, we needed Jackson County. We needed your help, and and uh, Mr. Uh, Spencer, uh, Bob Spence, thank you for your leadership in our, in our area as well. Uh, we needed the county's help uh, to take a regional approach to it. Now, what it does for Lee Summit, the city of Lee Summit does several things. One, it creates a opportunity for bicycling and pedestrian, um, not only transportation, but a, a quality of life uh, that will uh, be elevated for our community. It gives us hope on an economic development opportunity at I-470 in View High, uh, where long term we see the potential of a commuter stop uh, and uh, major development occurring there. And then finally, it gives us an opportunity to be better connected to our other communities and give us a chance for what I will say the 50 plus, and I know that none of you are 50 plus, but when you become 50 plus, you begin thinking about other methods of transportation. Uh, and maybe not driving your car as often, but still wanting to be active and engaged in all the, act the uh, cultural <coughs> amenities and activities. So this way we can go directly to the uh, Chiefs football game, uh, the Royal games, uh, perhaps even go right into some of the things in the center of, of Kansas City, Missouri, without having to worry about our eyesight and um, getting home after, after the event. So lots of pluses for us. Thank you very much. Uh, for being willing to take the leadership and uh, to move this very important uh, opportunity forward for us. I'll just kind of wrap this up with a couple of quick comments. I've already mentioned Jim Terry and Trans Systems, I mean, and he's no stranger to anybody on the legislature, certainly here with the county government. Uh, he and Pacific have been great partners. We've all worked together. The reality is his relationships within the railroad industry, uh, his knowledge of how we piece these projects together, we wouldn't be here today uh, talking about this announcement. We're talking about the possibility of being around Jackson County without Jim Terry's vision. So, Jim, I want to make sure that we publicly thank you. Uh, he's really not only the looks, but he's the brains of this operation, so he's really put this together in a lot of ways. And he'd be kicking my chair if I didn't finish where, where Steve also went. And that is, if you look over Steve's head and Mayor Bower's head, uh, you look at the access and connection to Arrowhead and Cotton. Uh, spring season, it's uh, opening opening for obviously the Royals, so we're still mathematically not eliminated. Uh, we can also look at the Chiefs. We've had some pretty good, pretty, pretty good season last season, so hope springs eternal. And imagine uh, being able to, whether you live in downtown Kansas City or somewhere along any one of these routes, getting that close to Arrowhead and Coffin Stadium. I can watch our sports teams play. Uh, if you look at the distance between that and these stadiums, it's closer than you can park a lot of the spaces around that stadium. It's exciting to think of what this means economically for all of us. 
and not lost on me is we had the uh, we had the All Star game uh, last year. The only complaint we had about the All Star game is we can't get to Arrowhead. I'm sorry, Kaufman, Kaufman Stadium, to the game and the other event centers around Kansas City. It's very inconvenient to travel uh, through Jackson County, but we would be interested in coming back to Kansas City in the future. This is exactly the kind of project that makes Kansas City and puts us back on the map, puts our community back on the map for these kinds of projects, economic development, jobs. It generates so much interest, it's, uh, it's very exciting for us. And with that, I'll open it up to any questions or comments you might have. Thank you, Mike. Um, I'd just like to say a few things real quick. Uh, I know that I just recently attended a seminar and I talked about viability and what makes a community healthy, not just for cities, but for an entire county. And that is the ability to move residents throughout. And I know that yourself, as well as a lot of other members in this audience, have been very, um, you know, have put in a lot of work on this. And they say persistence shows off. So your vision, your persistence, as well as everybody that has been part of this, has definitely showed off. Uh, you know, has definitely been displayed today. Um, I just wanted to say congratulations to everybody that has put in the time and effort because it has been a process and it will continue to be a process. And is there any, any questions that would, the members of the and, body would like to ask? And, and Bob, we certainly want to hear from you. The elder stage in the legislature here. <laughs> but thank you for that, and, and I appreciate you giving this group here some credit, but the reality is the credit goes to the legislature as well. You've been partners, you've all worked together to make sure this happens. Without everyone working together as a team, the mutual support to get this done, we wouldn't be here talking about this, so, so thank you again. And you think about long-term how we plan for a community, you think about what this community needs to look like 20, 30, 40 years from now, you're absolutely right. You look at millennials, in terms of what they want, study after study. Now, as an Ohio State grad, I rarely want to talk about the University of Michigan, but I'll do it in this one context. But they did a study of millennials, 35 and younger. Of millennials, 35 and younger, the question was asked, would you rather have a new iPhone or a new car? Two-thirds pick the new iPhone over a new car. They would choose an iPhone over a car. If we are going to be a community, that is, I, I agree, Denny. Uh, Denny's thinking, I'll get the brand new iRock, I'll sell that value iPhones. I want the secondary market. But reality, the reality is they would rather have that iPhone. That is social connectivity. That is the connectivity of the next generation and beyond. And so we want to think about what kind of community are we going to have to lure that intellectual talent uh, into the future. The reality is we have to have, and they want to live in communities that have access through rail transit. That's just a reality. Uh, for the younger generation. You know, when I grew up, whether I went away in the Army or the military or law school, I knew that I was coming back to Kansas City. That's no longer the new reality, uh, right? Millennials are deciding where to live based upon these kinds of projects, green transit, access to trails, quality of life issues, and then finding their job second. That's the new economic reality. We all see that in our lives through children, through grandchildren, uh, or in Fred's case, through great, 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 great grandchildren. <laughs> 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 But the reality is that is the new reality going forward for all of us. We have to get a plan. Your friends lead work for comment. Here it goes. So that's the new reality. Nevertheless, whatever Mike says about Ohio State and Michigan, I could care less because I'm a Michigan State. <laughs> yeah. and they're not right all the time. But uh, Mike, did you, did you mention that uh, the trains would be running, not just the passenger trains that we would have, the cars? Union Pacific would be running cars and trains up and down that track, too, that's coming through Lee Summit? They would not. It's, in fact, the opposite. If you look along those those corridor routes right there, uh, part of the agreement is freight traffic's included in the future, which, is, which is a giant step, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Now, along the Sedalia Sub, <clears throat> if I can get there, if you look along the Sedalia Sub, those will continue to be major transit corridors for the Union Pacific. Now, once again, this doesn't mean that commuter rail trains are running in the, in the not too distant future, right? To sort of make your point, Mr. Urbanus, what this says is it's possible. Should we buy these? Should we find the purchase price of the federal government, state government, you know, coming together as a group to find the dollars to, to fund this uh, and put this really in the bank, so to speak? It makes it possible in the future. There's still a lot of steps that have to happen, but it makes commuter rail possible in terms of looking at these rail corridors. $9 million from the year two floor that wasn't on the table. Uh, commuter rail was a possibility. You think about commuter rail and what it means uh, to this community, I think it's very significant what it could mean. Uh, but heretofore, it's been grease pencil lines on a map. That concept, this concept made sense, but it wasn't a reality. Today, it's a, it's a hard reality. If this community decides, whether it's the federal government or state government, to pool the resources, to get the existing resources, to buy these right away so we can purchase those, bank those, and make commuter rail a possibility in the future. Beyond that, a second significant, there are a number of them, but a second significant development that the Union Pacific Railroad, our partner in this process, is willing to explore the use of the, the Sedalia sub, so it's called, what we call, uh, which flows from Sedalia to downtown Kansas City, which can tie in all these commuter rail corridors, to explore the use of that, that corridor uh, for commuter rail. Show me where that is on the map. Yeah, so commuter rail, you look at this. This is the Sedalia sub, as it runs up here. It runs all the way around. You see where it ties in directly with the fixing That's the Sedalia sub. 
about the time of the county, the uh, state of county address. So you said light rails, or not light rails, you said commuter rail. Commuter rail. Light rail. Commuter rail, commuter rail was dead, uh, it was off the table, and it was, it was no longer a, a viable thing. This was, you know, I, I think, no. I, I don't like it though. No. Well, I, maybe someone told me that, we didn't tell you. What are, what are the next steps? Um, yeah. Process. Next steps, great, great question. So right now we've got an option agreement at no cost to taxpayers and no risk to taxpayers. We have an option agreement to purchase these rail corridors should we decide to do it. Uh, so where do we go for the purchase price? And by the way, $59 million purchase price is roughly a third to half less than our initial offer that we were given, as well as what we thought it might be. So that's a significant lowering of the price, more trackage rights uh, for less, less cost. Uh, so what do you do next? One of the things we're going to do, we continue to work with our congressional delegation, the folks in Washington, D.C., and we'll try and work with the folks in Jefferson City uh, to look at ways we can pool resources, to grab resources, to tiger grants, to other grant processes to pay the full purchase price. And speaking to Congressman Cleaver's office, uh, they don't believe, and he doesn't believe it's unrealistic, I think we can get the full $59 million purchase price. Uh, regardless, there's a coalition of local governments as well, so state government, local government, federal government, but look at the local governments, there are a coalition that were represented here today, a number of which were represented here today, uh, to look at whatever may be left, uh, to look at ways that we could pay this off over a period of time. So what's key here is uh, no tax increases, no additional uh, tax resources. We think all this can be done with existing revenue streams and done very handily. Also contained within the agreement with the Union Pacific Railroad is the option of owner financing, which I think was pointed out in front of the legislature, is very significant that it would save both the option agreement uh, purchase price, uh, as well as other methods, would save the taxpayers thousands, if not millions of dollars over the life of this network. My question, people, what should people watching tonight be excited about this program? You kind of seem a little bit excited about this. Why should people at home be excited about well, this? Well, you know, once again, if you look at any vibrant community, uh, really in the world, certainly in America, vibrant communities, growing communities have access to rail transit and mass transit. If you look at the top 100 cities in the United States, Kansas City rates 99th in terms of access to mass transit. It's something that makes sense for us as a community. You know, up until now, if you want to look at building a commuter rail system that accesses the entire community, all of eastern Jackson County and downtown Kansas City, it's been a great idea. It makes sense. I think it's, it pulls very well. People like the concept, but it hasn't been a reality. It's just been a concept. What this allows us to do, whether today, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, we bank these rail corridors and right-of-ways, we can make commuter rail a real possibility. But beyond that, uh, you think of what makes a growing, vibrant community, a green community that people want to live in, you know, the sort of quality of life issues that people find so significant for our community. This also allows for trail access. It's not lost on any of us uh, that the Rock Island route links up directly with the Katy Trail. We're working with the city of Lee Summit, represented here today, as well as uh, crosses the, 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 the Katy Trail that we have, as well as crosses the Little Blue Trace Trail. And so in the not too distant future, you could see or foresee a network of trail systems that circumnavigates navigates the entire community for a very low price point. Uh, these kinds of things aren't done or aren't done as cheaply as we need to be doing for it. So where do you, I mean, what are you asking for today, other than from the legislature? What needs to go from here? I think at this point, there's really no action necessary. There's no risk on, on, the, on, on behalf of the county. There's certainly no risk on behalf of the taxpayers. So I think we're in a wait-and-see mode. We're going to work with our congressional delegation in Washington, D.C., to look at the full purchase price, our senators uh, to look at the full purchase price, the state of Missouri, see where that goes. Uh, I think we'll know fairly shortly what, what that could mean, certainly by the end of the year. Uh, continue to keep our partners updated in this process, and should there be anything left, we'll certainly look at the coalition uh, to bank this. I think it's significant that this is banked. If you look at any community that's put together, realistically put together commuter rail and not done it in the light rail concept, which is you know, 150 plus million a mile or 15 million a mile, like we think we can do this for or less, anyone that's done that has started with this step and started with the step of banking rail corridors for future use. That is a necessary uh, first step to really putting this together. So that's the next step. For us. Commuter rail is ten years off after this. Oh, I don't, I, I don't, I don't know where that comes from. I mean, I think it really. No, it comes to me. I, that's my question. Is it ten years off or more? If, if you talk to the engineers, if you bank these rail corridors, and once again, financing is the issue. Once you bank these rail corridors, it really becomes an issue of financing. How do you pay for it? Uh, so that really comes down to the federal government, the state government, uh, to see what uh, what that looks like in the future. So, I, engineering wise, uh, once you bank these rail corridors, you can start laying track tomorrow. It really, the issue becomes financing. And how, what was the original price of the of the quarters? Well, it, it depends. Now, if, if you look at the original offer, we, we believe we got the Union Pacific Railroad. It was roughly $120 million, but it stopped short of I-435, which would have made it unviable as used as a commuter rail corridor. Uh, what we thought it would land at was roughly $90 million in talking to the engineers. This comes in at $59 million, but also includes the Pixley Spur, which is an additional $3.5 million, as well as $1.9 
mile independent spur. So it's more trackage rights, more rights, I should say, uh, at, at roughly one third. Uh, that, that for us was significant. Now, once again, how did that happen? We have to really look at our partner, the Union Pacific Railroad. They didn't look at turning a major profit off this. They looked at giving us what we think is an incredibly reasonable price, uh, allowing us to explore the use of the Sedalia sub. This is really due to their generosity that we can stand here and talk about this agreement. Just a couple more guys. Has there been any progress with the Kansas City Southern Railway Company? I know that they run from I-70 to downtown. Is there any progress in all of those lines? The day we're here talking about the Union Pacific Railroad, we think is an historic announcement to the Union Pacific Railroad. Uh, like we didn't do a uh, previous this announcement, we didn't discuss any negotiations. They may or may not have been ongoing. But today we're talking about a deal with our partner, the Union Pacific Railroad, and really, uh, I, I think, a significant step forward for commuter rail. But don't you also need to deal with Kansas City Southern? If you look at what you could put together, if, if you look at the Sedalia Sub, you're able to access Independence, virtually all of eastern Jackson County, and get downtown with the Sedalia Sub. Uh, so this Union Pacific Agreement and the potential exploration of use of the Sedalia Sub is significant in terms of that alone a piece together a commuter rail plan that works for Jackson County. Okay, okay. And what, my question I've answered your question. Don't, 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 you know, question. don't you think that you need Kansas City Southern as well? It's also important to be left. I think I've answered the question. I'd like the answer, but I've answered the question. Joe. <laughs> I think we're good, guys. How would you use uh, Pixley Spur to get downtown? Pixley Spur. So as, as you showed with mine, if you look at the Pixley Spur, here it is. It runs from essentially just east of 291, uh, close to the Sedalia Sub, to the downtown Kansas City. It's just it's a uh, linear path on the map. Where does it end? Uh, it may end somewhere in Florida. I don't know. But it certainly yeah, goes to Sedalia. Exactly. So, uh, uh, thank you. Somewhere down to Sedalia. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. That, that, that's for analysis. All right. We got a chamber empty, guys. We got a chamber empty. All right. I'm going to leave it with Mark. Okay, bye. What?